All right, welcome to the track training class. I'm so excited that you're here. We're gonna keep this concise. We're gonna keep it fast paced. And I'm really excited that on December 5th, 2023, you are ready to get your kids running faster in track than they did in cross country and have an even better track season than you had a uh, cross country season. Okay, who's this for? This is for serious coaches who wanna make a jump this year, okay? This is also for coaches who don't know exactly how to train lots of different types of groups. You know, we have our athletes who are, are, are coming out of the cross country season, maybe had a great season, have uh, done higher volumes, are really serious. We might also have kids that are going to come out for the track season, not even now in December, not even in January, but in February when um, official track practice starts. So uh, new coaches, veteran coaches. There, there, there's also a type of coach I, I really like to help, which is a coach who might feel like, hey, we're trying to get over the hump, might, might, might be a, a term they use. This, this idea that, hey, we, we have a solid program, but we don't know what we need to do to get to the next level. So we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about things like that tonight. Um, I have to check my notes here to remind some people, hey, athletes, this is not a webinar for you. This is a webinar for your coaches. There's all kinds of people out there who – coach kids as club coaches and whatnot. I'm not one of those people. So you can find them on the internet easily. Okay. Um, what we're going to talk about is the track training, um, the track training essentials, which is this free 40 page PDF. And I'm actually going to be adding to it in the next week. Okay. But um, underneath this video on YouTube, you can click on that and you can get that 40 page uh, PDF tonight. The other thing I'm going to be talking about is is my is my my flagship course, the track training system. So in cross country, we have the cross country training system. In track, we have the track training system, and they work together. It's the best training I have. Um, let's see here. I've been coaching for over 20 years now, and so this is all 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 I know about helping people run fast. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we're going to talk about tonight. There's there's two bonuses. If you're on my email list, you know that the second edition of Consistency is Key is coming out in February. I'm going to talk about how you can get seven books for free. Um, you know, you're, I'm not just going to give them to you for free at the end of this, but but you'll learn how. And then we'll talk about the Boulder Running Clinics and some some things that you can get for free as well in terms of uh, Boulder Running Clinics videos. Okay, let let's do this. Let's hop right into uh, this. Uh, oh, and I'm leaving this out. So I recorded some videos earlier today to make this move really fast because the uh, technology here would have me shifting between PDFs and videos and things like that. So this is a live class, but it, but there's going to be some things that I recorded earlier today or things from the track training system that I'm going to share. So let's hop in the first one and here we go. About what's in the track training essentials. First thing you need to do is you need to opt in, which just means you need to share your email. And the, literally the, the moment that you share your email, you're going to be taken to a page where you can download it. So let's walk through that. All right. So at the link below this video, you just click that and you'll be taken here and you'll see that you just share your first name and email. Once you do that, you'll be taken to this page and you just click on the track training essentials and you'll be able to download the uh, PDF. As you can see, we've got some other things there. We've got uh, free warm up videos and training videos. I also have the track training system and cross country training system. And then we'll, we'll do this really quick. We'll just scroll down here. You can see we've got some other workouts, 800 meter training, um, lots of workouts here, other cross country things, and also free chapters from consistency is key. All right, here we go with the track training essentials. And this is a long document. We, you can see it here. It goes all the way down to 40 pages. Um, there's a lot of information here and, and we're not going to spend time on this webinar tonight going through the entire thing, but I want to highlight a couple things. So the four elements, we're going to do a warm up, We're going to do workout. We're going to do strides. We're going to do post run work. But if you click here, this takes you to the various parts from consistency is key where i talk about the car analogy building the aerobic engine strengthening the chassis and revving the engine each day and then we got to do hard days hard and easy days easy we talk about the progressions before we go into the phases of training if you click on this tab here you're going to be taken to an article that's going to explain hey what's the two-week break that people need to take between the end of track and the be or excuse me the end of cross country and the beginning of track 
there's a very good chance you've seen that already, but possibly not. Okay. So then this is our little break. It takes about five minutes to read this part of it. And then what I shared with you here is five weeks of training. And this is what I'm going to take some time in this webinar this evening to go. I should be calling it a class. I should call it a class instead of a webinar. Cause that, that that's what we're doing. We are teaching principles today and we're, I'm going to walk through this in a video momentarily. But then what I do here, if you're somebody who would rather read than watch, just know that here is all this explanation of these plans. We're also going to walk through different days for these different plans. This is LR60. And I explain all that in here. And then when we get to the places where you need to download videos for the warm up and the post run work, you have that QR code here. There, there's also places you can link to it up here and get that information. But the bottom line is if you're somebody who likes to read, you would rather read than go through all this. You're absolutely able to do that. So yeah, just fast forward through all here. And then later this evening, we will talk about what's in some of these other plans. But bottom line is everything I just scrolled through quickly is something that you can read. It'll probably take about 20, 25 minutes to, to read all that and really understand, hey, what is going on in that training in that first week? This is volume, or excuse me, version one. This is the Track Training Essentials V1, which you can download tonight. If you're watching this video, even the recording of this, even two or three days later, I'm gonna be updating this to V2 and I'll go day by day. Okay, you're probably thinking, Jay, we're watching, we're here for a live class about track. Why are you showing us a cross country workout blog post? Okay, here's the reason we use the same aer challenging aerobic workouts in track that we do in cross country. We're, we're going to build the aerobic engine in the same way. And there's a progression of these workouts. So we learn them, we go from long runs to fartlek runs to progression runs to the aerobic repeats to the 30, 90 far. And you do need to take the time to read this article. If you haven't seen it, it's really, I would like to think that it's well-written. I can guarantee that it's been edited well in terms of errors and things like that. So it, it's going to read really quote clean, right? And then what I do is here's the long run. I tell you the rationale, how often we're going to do it is the frequency. Do we go by time or distance? This is one where you, where I'd like you to do it by minutes when you start. But if you want to do it, you might have a course in your town that, hey, we have the eight mile course and the 10 mile course and the 12 mile course and kids who do eight really want to build up to 10. That's, that, that's totally fine. We talk about the intensity for every one, farther or faster or both, and then common, common mistakes that people make with these. And then this is where it's not going to apply right now. I talk about how it fits in the cross country training system. Then we go into fartlex, which is the next workout and you can see frequency time. So you understand the uh, point, but actually I'll go back to it for one second. But man, this is a really in-depth article that's going to explain like when we're looking at, we're going to look at progression runs. Oh, and then that's in there right there. I talk about why I use progression runs rather than threshold runs. That threshold runs are really powerful. I'm going to argue that progression runs are just as powerful. And for most kids are more fun and Threshold runs are hard to teach kids. It's really hard for kids to execute a threshold run in the scientific way where they're running at, let's say, 3.7 millimolar of lactate and 4.0 millimolar of lactate is where they're starting to accumulate too much lactate, all of those things. And even if you had blood cams, and even if you were doing what you see the professional runners do, which is blood draws from the ear, if you have 10 athletes out there, they're going to have all these different threshold paces, right? You would need a probably five different groups. You'd probably need two kids in all these various groups. So the bottom line is take the time to read this. And this is all in the track training essentials document. I didn't put all this in there. I didn't copy and paste that. I just have a link in there, a little blue link, click on that and you will go there. All right. Now let's dive into some of the training that we're going to talk about for track. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how the best training is in the track training system, not in this free document, the track training essentials. Okay, we could have had like a, a meta experience with my head there and then my head here. All right, I, I want to talk about some of the stuff in the track training essentials. And again, this is a this is a free PDF. It's 40 pages tonight. It's it's going to have even more pages. Um, it's I'm trying to give you something really useful that you can use right now. 
we had so many people chime in and say, Hey, I've got different levels of athletes. You, you know, I've got athletes in lots of different groups and that's what I, I, I want to walk you through here. Let's go look at that. Um, and, and please, please bear with me. Sometimes this takes, here we go. Sometimes this takes me a moment to get things fired up. All right. All right. So here we are in the uh, track training essentials. This is the, the, the four elements. We're doing a warm up. We're doing uh, a run. We're doing strides. We're going to um, do post run work. I explain that in the, uh, in consistency is key in this, in my book, you know, we, we talk about this, uh, car analogy. And if you don't have that, you just click here and, and you can download those things. This is really important right here. Extending the aerobic stimulus. Okay. So one of the things that you have to understand with my training is if we go from the warm up to the run to strides, to post run work without taking any breaks, we're going to get a longer aerobic stimulus. We're going to build the aerobic engine in a greater way than if we're taking breaks between those things. Now I'm, I'm going to go into detail later on. I'm going to show you, I'll show you the exact times for this. So like, you know, the warm up takes 30 minutes. The post run work could take 15 minutes, could take as much as 20 or 25 minutes. There's uh, coaches on here tonight. You can chime in and explain how, oh my gosh, I had to teach these kids the warm up. I had to teach them the, uh, the, uh, post run work. But the idea is, you know, whether it's a 45 minute easy day run or it's a long run, that's uh, 70 minutes. We're going to get a longer aerobic stimulus by, uh, doing it this way. So, what one of the things I, I really want to highlight, there, there's two big mistakes I see coaches make. And here's the deal. We've got to do a progression of strides the very first day of practice. Okay. And this is in there right there. And all you have to do is follow this progression of strides. I'll um here it is right here. So you will start with A. Here, I'll go like that. You will start with A. And you'll just move through all the way, you know, obviously you're going uh, to go A, B, C, D, and you're going to move through it that way. The important point I, wa I want to make to you is, is that we have to rev the engine almost every day that we run, but you have to start that on day one of practice. Now, if you've already started your winter training and you haven't done this, don't panic, okay? The flip side is if you're going to be meeting next week or you're going to be meeting in January, you have to have the mentality that... If we're going to get kids to be able to run good uh, relay legs on the four by four, if we're going to get them to PR at 800 meters, shouldn't they be running 400 meter rhythm, 800 meter rhythm for at least a hundred meters as soon as possible, right? So what, what, what happens too often is that we have athletes who have a quote, big aerobic engine. They're, they're fit aerobically, but their legs haven't been moving at 400 and 800 meter pace. They're not doing that in January. They're not doing that in February. Now, now they have a, a meet in March. And this is part of the reason, and I, um, I go into a lot of detail here. My, I'm progressing everything from strides to volume to post-run work to the intensity of workouts. And most programs aren't progressing week after week after week. But strides is a really important one because you will have a kid who's got a big enough aerobic engine to do, you know, really, pat, really fast repeat 400s, but it's, it's too intense on their calves, their Achilles, their plantar fascia, their IT band, because you haven't kind of warmed them up over the course of weeks and months into faster running. So that's mistake number one, and it's an easy mistake that you can fix. You have that document this evening. If you don't have it right now, if you're not on my email list, all you have to do is uh, click the link below, share your email, and you will get that document. All right, um, so that was the, uh, the uh, two things I wanted to talk about was extending the aerobic stimulus, doing strides. We've uh, got to do those two things. So let's, let's go back to the uh, video now and let's talk about this, this training calendar because what we have here is I shared this color coded thing. Where is it? It's this right here. So this is something that a lot of people got yesterday who are on my email list, but I, but you know, if you hadn't had a chance to read it, you, you maybe don't know what's going on there. So let's hop into that right now. All 
All right, here we go. Track training system. And we are going to go through what we call the calendars. So the calendar is the bigger overview. Now it has every day's training, but because it's in a calendar view, it doesn't have as much detail. There are daily plans. And this is where you have daily plans for individual athletes. Okay. And that tells you what volume those athletes should run, but we're going to walk through this calendar. I'm not going to speed through it, but I'm also not going to take too much time because this is something that you need to take some time and study and see the rhythm of, Hey, we're doing races on this day on a Friday, and then going back to Tuesday, we're going to do a hard workout. We maybe do a long run the uh, Saturday prior. Okay. But let's go in here and we'll start change this up. And then we'll start here at the beginning top here is phases. So we have phase one, phase two, phase three. Okay. Phase one is winter training. Phase two is when we have our first indoor meet and phase three is the beginning of outdoor track. Now in this column here, you can see we, we have all these colors. We have the yellow and then we get into phase two. We've got the green showing you there. And then we've got that reddish color saying we're an outdoor track. Okay. Workouts, challenging aerobic workouts are this teal color. And then we've got easy days with hard post run work. And you should understand what hard post run work is now. The fun fast, it's been an easy medium day. We don't have a ton of these days, but that's part of the track training system. And then these are really important, the race pace workouts or days when we're doing goal pace, okay? So race pace, goal pace workouts there. And then the meets, we just do three types of meets. Indoors, or excuse me, indoor meets, outdoor meets that are less important. And then the outdoor meets where we're hoping to PR. <clears throat> okay. And this is out. I'm, I'll have a different video where I go day by day through phase one, phase one here. What we can see is that I've listed the week in the phase and then how many weeks out to a uh, state. Okay. So let's look at this first week. We've got 24 weeks to state. And I'll explain when I go through the daily documents, you might have fewer weeks than that. But Monday, we we're going to learn the warm up. Then we're going to do a challenging aerobic workout. This day, that's a fart. Then we're still learning the warm up this week. And then we have our easy day with strides, but we're doing the hard post run work. So that's something that we do in the winter. This idea is it's still an easy day in terms of volume, but we're going to do hard post run work. And that's going to make it essentially a medium day. Okay. Another easy day, we're doing long runs on Saturdays. Um, if you're a team that wants to get your long run done during the week and not meet kids on Saturday, I totally understand. I think what we find with daylight savings time is it's hard to get all that work done after the school day. And probably the quality of the long run is going to be a lot lower on Friday. So that's why I assume a Saturday long run. And then, yeah, we just go week by week and we're just putting in the work in the winter. So these days are pretty similar. We're doing long runs every Saturday, Tuesday, we do a fartlek then you'll understand this with my, my progression of challenging workouts. We do fart licks, then we do progression runs, and then we're going to come back with a fart lick again in week three. Then we're going to do a progression in week four. After four weeks here, they should have a good sense of learning to, of, of learning to, to run by feel. But in these first two weeks, man, this, this fart lick workout might go poorly. The progression run might go poorly. They're learning the warm up. They don't know what the post run work is plan on these two weeks to have longer practices and kids not knowing exactly what's going on. I find that in the third week, kids understand what the uh, warm up is pretty well and are starting to understand what they're supposed to do for post run work. But if this fart leg doesn't go well, that's fine because they're still learning to run by feel. And the uh, same with this progression run here, this progression run, they might misjudge it a little bit and not be able to speed up in that last five minutes. However, if you look at this, there's six teal days between a workout and a long run every week before they get to this progression. And so they have had six opportunities to learn to run by feel because the long run teaches kids to learn to run by feel as well. Obviously they, they need to run a little easier in the beginning of the long run. But then when we do that last 20 minutes with the strides, they are running faster. Winter break is here. Man, I really think serious kids will get things done over over winter break, but if they don't, that that that's fine. Um, I do think by week four, they really should understand how to do the warm up, how to do post run work. If your team doesn't have those concepts and is really struggling to do that, or if they're struggling to buy in, this is probably and and I, I hope this is an appropriate term. That's where you need to have that kind of come to Jesus meeting about hey. This is what we're doing. We are doing this warm up every day. We are doing this post run work. 
But if kids really are on board with doing something different to run PRs, they'll be ready. They'll, they'll be ready to do that in week four. Okay. So let's assume now in week five, we're really rolling along. Oh, and in week five too, we'll talk about this in the daily schedule, but in week five, I believe in all the plans, they're back up to the long run volume that they did back in cross country. So now in week five, I would say the volume is pretty high and they get to do a really fun workout aerobic repeats. I put over here, it's fun. And we're running faster for the aerobic portion, but then we're jogging. Okay. Whereas it's a little bit different than a fart lick where we're trying to run a steady pace in between. Let's talk about the daily schedule. All right. Uh, we're going to take most of the, of the uh, questions at the end of this presentation, but if anybody has a, a question now, I, I can take one or two now. Um, but we're going to do most of them at the end of the uh, presentation. One thing I should say is that, you know, you need to understand what those workouts are. You need to, uh, to, to download the track training essentials. Then there's going to be a link there. And like I said, I, at the, at the, at the start of this presentation, you know, you need to read that article about those challenging aerobic workouts, long runs to fart lick runs to progression runs. Then we do this aerobic repeats workout that you might not have heard of. And then, um, there, there's a workout I do call a 30, 90 fart lick that I haven't seen anywhere else. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's just a uh, type of uh, fart lick. But the idea is we're teaching kids to learn to run by feel. I'm, I'm going to talk more about that in a moment, but it takes some time to teach them to do that. But as I talked about there, if you have a serious athlete, we go week one, fart lick, week two, progression run, week three, fart lick run, but the long runs are teaching them to run by feel too. When we get to week four, between learning the warm up, between the uh, post run work. Now, when we hit that second progression run, that workout should go pretty well. Okay. And people who've been in the cross country training system or in the uh, track training system um, can, uh, can, 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 can chime in there. Why don't we do this? Why don't we not take any questions now? Uh, oh my gosh, that's a weird looking screen right there. And let's get that off there and uh, talk about these uh, daily schedules. Oh. Okay, this assumes a lot of things. It assumes hi, and they get to do a really fun workout, aerobic repeats. I put over here, it's fun. And we're running faster for the aerobic portion, but then we're jogging, okay? Whereas it's a little bit different than a fart lick where we're trying to run a steady pace in between. Let's talk about the daily schedule. Okay, this assumes a lot of things. It assumes when you log into the track training system, I did not make something clear. This is a video that is from the track training system. Okay. So if you were to join the track training system, you would, you would see this video and I'm only going to share about five to six minutes of it now, because I'm going to share what those first five weeks are. We're going to go day by day by day, but in the track training system. And again, this is, this is the course that you pay for that you enroll in. And this is the course where we go out through through 24 weeks. Now, one of the things I explain in the track training essentials, that free PDF is we do things in free in three phases. Phase one is basically your winter training. Phase two is from your first time trial or an indoor meet. And as, as a, uh, ast not an asterisk, as an aside here, I really like having one or two indoor meets if you have them in your state, because, hey, Kids want to train in the winter, but they also want to have fun and race. And, I, and I'm not somebody who emphasizes indoors um, in a big way, but I, I absolutely think a hard training kid in the winter running an indoor meet or two is great. So anyway, first indoor meet, or or if you if you can't do an indoor meet, you do a time trial, then to the first important outdoor meet, not the first outdoor meet, the first important outdoor meet. That's phase one. Phase two is, is that first important meet to the end of the season. For some kids, that could only be uh, four or five weeks. For some kids, it could be eight or nine. I really like it to be six or seven weeks. I, if it, you know, We don't want that last phase to be too short because that's the time where we're really hoping that they will run, uh, that they will run some nice PRs. And, and obviously, for most kids, we're looking at April and May for that uh, phase three. Okay, so I just wanted to explain that what you're about to see is in the track training system. I have to assume that you've watched every video leading up to this point. I've tried to keep them as concise as possible, but you need to understand we're doing Jeff's warm up, we're doing the run, we're doing strides, we're doing post run work. That's what's going to be in here. You need to understand all the aerobic workouts. That'll be in there as well. 
what's going to be coming on what will come later on are these uh, race pace workouts so what i'll do when we get to that part in this daily schedule is i'll say hey after you've watched this go ahead and watch that but yeah this is super fun so here we go let's hop into it all right so this column here has the weeks to state and again this assumes weeks to state but it could be weeks to the end of the season remember that almost very few kids are going to do 24 weeks so it's going to happen as i talked about in the calendar video is you're going to be cutting off you're going to be truncating some of this part of phase one but again yellow is phase one and just like we talked about another calendar green is phase two and then red is phase three if you're wondering what those colors are i'll get to them in a moment okay we are doing the 1600 meter long run 60 and this is phase one two and three so even though this is saturday let's actually start with saturday to explain this 60 minute long run okay so that's the volume we're starting with and as i said in the calendar video this is for an athlete who was averaging 70 minutes for their last three or four runs in cross country okay so we're going to start with the long run because that's what this is based off is that we're doing a 60 minute long run and remember this is for your athlete that the athlete you would put into this plan is somebody who's doing a 70 minute long run in cross country. All these volumes make sense in terms of, Hey, a 33 minute easy day, four times 20 second strides at the 15 minute mark of the run. Now, if you're saying, man, they're only going to run 15 minutes and start doing strides. I'm always trying to give the athlete 15 to 18 minutes to do those strides. Okay. When we get up here, fast forward in two weeks, when we're doing a 36 minute run, if you look, it says at the 20 minute mark, we do our strides. Okay. So the longer these runs get, the later we do those strides. So we're always doing strides on the easy day. Post run work is red. If you're wondering why we're doing red the first week, I just think it's, there, there's so much going on the first week. We do, I skipped over this. We're doing Jeff's warm up to start. And then we're doing this run. We want to go straight into the post run work. Just this idea of, we warm up, we go straight into our run, we're doing strides, we go straight into post-run work. I think cognitively, that's actually more of a challenge than we think it is for athletes. And let's be honest, for a lot of you, they're having to buy into something new. If this, if you haven't done the cross-country training system, this is new for your athletes. You're doing the track training system, this is a, a new approach. So we're just starting with red, even it, it, most kids who could handle 60, who are doing 70 minute long runs in cross-country, in 2022, you probably had them doing core strength or general strength of some sort, and they might find the red to be pretty easy, but then the next week we'll go into orange. Okay, easy run, fartlek, you know what that workout is. Then we go easier, we dial down the volume on the workout day, and then this first week we go back up to the 33 minute run, but we do hard post run, okay? So red hard. Then we go back to an easy day on Friday. Hey, and if you had, if you need, needed them to do this on their own later in the year, I think that's totally fine. This is a short day, Jeff's warm up. This is a day they can hang out with their friends after they're done with all this. Okay, long run, 60 minutes here. And at the 40 minute mark, we're doing four by 25 second strides. So this is different than doing 20 second strides. We're doing uh, longer strides. We'll build up to 30 seconds later on. And this should be a challenging run for them because remember, if you have an athlete who ran 70 minutes earlier in the cross country season and they're thinking, coach, I'm only running 60 minutes, tell them, yeah, and let's get after it. Okay. Enjoy the first 20 minutes, maybe get going a little bit at 30 minutes. But when we get to the 40 minute mark, it's on, we're doing these strides. This is something new. And then when we go um, back into it. Okay. So that's week one. Now these, these other weeks are going to follow this pattern. We're doing an easy run with strides. We're doing easy post run. We're doing a workout. This is a progression run. And you know what that is for the athlete here. The volume is 45 minutes. Oh, I should have said that in week one, a long run of 60, 45 minutes makes it sense for, for the volume of the workout. If you feel like that's not enough, just trust me, they should be getting after it on these workouts. And we're not looking at Garmin's on the fartlicks and the progression runs necessarily. But if they do want to upload that to Final Surge or share it with you after the run, I think you'll see they'll be running pretty fast. So workout, then an easy day, and then Thursday is this longer. We go a little bit longer, just a minute longer, and we're doing hard post-run work. Orange hard, This they might be a little fatigued today because 48 hours earlier, they did a progression run, they did an orange hard day, and orange is harder than red, okay? As we get through the progressions, yellow is where we make the big jump in the post-run work. 
62 minutes, just a little bit longer in the long run. And then same thing this week. Now we're doing a fart lick again. This time the fart lick, they're doing one more chunk and they're doing this one. They had two minutes at 5k effort followed by three minutes steady. That's a pretty easy fart lick. I wouldn't say easy, but it, it's not the hardest workout in the world. It's the first workout of the, of the year. But when we come down to this fart lick, A, we're going five minutes longer, 50 minutes, and we're doing three, two, okay? They need to be ready to go. We're two weeks in, so they've learned the warm up. They know how to do post run work. Now they should be able to really get after it in this workout. So they do this orange hard, easy day, come back Thursday, a little bit longer run, hard post run, easy Friday. Now they're at a 65 minute run. I think the third week of training, a 65 minute run, we're at the 45 minute mark. Now they're doing five by 25 second strides. I think your most serious kids, your boys and girls who had a great cross country season and are ready to get after it. I think we can expect this workout to go well. And then we come back the next week with the progression run. They've done a progression run before. This is a 25 minute progression run. They know what they're doing. The big change here is twofold. Number one is they can do orange or yellow. Do not rush kids on the post run work. Okay. That being said, if you did the cross country training system, you definitely will have kids ready for yellow right now. But I also think people who are new to the track training system, there's a good chance you were in the weight room, you were doing core strength, you were doing some challenging stuff for your juniors and seniors. They should, there's a very good chance they can handle yellow post run. Just know that to bump up from orange to yellow here, this week of orange has had to go really well. And specifically the orange hard after their long run in this week needs to have gone well. Okay. So what are we doing this week? That's different. We got the baby track workout and we're only, we're doing Jeff's warm up straight into 10 or 20 minutes of running. Your kids are not going to like this at first because the volume's low on this day. Then we go to the track and we change into spikes. We're doing five by 120 at 1600 meter goal pace. That's not that fast, okay? A 120 for a girl who's gonna run 520, that's not fast running. And then the, the recovery is just the rest of that lap. So it's essentially, it's really like 250 meters and then she's running in 30 meters and then running a 120. So we just keep doing that and then don't cool down with the jog, take their spikes off, go straight into the hard post run work. This is going to be a low day on their, on their training plan, or excuse me, a low day in their training log, but it's going to be harder than they think. But this is a nice day too, when the weather isn't great, that you could flip flop things. You could have done this on Tuesday if it's a bad weather day, but you think the track is safe. And then the weather Thursday is going to be nice. You, you could switch these. I don't necessarily love a workout here and a long run here, but what I'm trying to highlight is this is short and sweet. But in this week of practice, because it's track, we want to move past just a progression of strides. We want to be on the track and doing these baby workouts. And what you'll see for the rest of phase one is that we do this on Thursday. But I should also say that anytime you want to just do what we did in this week, which was a little bit longer of an easy run and hard post run work, that's fine. Because there's going to be certain days where you where a Thursday has bad weather and they can run outside and they can do strides as part of the run, but they shouldn't be on the track spiked up. Okay, 67 minutes. We're really getting back to that 70 minute uh, long run that they did. And then this week, man, it's it. I would say a game on because we're doing the aerobic repeats and we're doing yellow hard. So for this athlete, what are we, five weeks into training? One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is the fifth week into training. We're doing our aerobic repeats, super fun workout. Kids really enjoy it. I used to have it later on in the training, but kids liked it so much. Let's do it in week five. Post run work is hard, baby workout, hard post run. And then now they're back at their 70 minute run. Your kids should be, this athlete should be running at least a mile farther, maybe closing in on a mile and a half farther and maybe starting to say, oh my gosh, pretty soon I'm gonna be running two miles farther on my long run than I was in cross country season. This is a fun part of the book. Okay. Wow. We have a lot of great questions coming in. This is super fun. Uh, I hope you guys are fired up. Um, we are, you know, people always do this on a live class. If you're enjoying this, you can chime in, in the, uh, in the uh, chat. Okay. Um, Don has this great question. Don is in the track training system. He says, what does my week look like if I have a lot of Thursday meets? Thursday meets are not ideal, especially if you're going to run again Saturday. 
Don is somebody in the track training system can send me his schedule at the end of January into February. And I'll just look at his schedule. This is after he's learned everything in the track training system. And, and, and I have a way to explain to people, Hey, you've got to understand the principles, but once you understand that, send me your training. And then part of what you get as part of being part of the track training system is me, um, chiming in on that. Um, this I thought was great. Gregory says, I finally got buy-in in the post-run work this year, and it was by far the health healthiest season, even though it was only our uh, third season. Um, Jim has teams winning the uh, state championship in cross country, and he's saying, hey, how, how are you able to get athletes to buy in? And and I think I have to be honest about the fact that buy-in is going to be harder for teams who had success prior to the cross country training system or prior to the uh, track training system. But with, with that in mind, oh, and then somebody asked a question about strides. I want to talk about that. So this was a really good question. How much rest between the strides and at what effort is the jog between them? So let's say we're running for 35 minutes. If we're running for 35 minutes, we're going to do the strides at the 20 minute mark. So we do Jeff's warm up, right? We're going to extend the aerobic stimulus and we're going straight into the run. So it's 13 minutes for the warm up into this 35 minute run. The first 20 minutes are easy. They're just running easy pace because as I'm going to talk about soon, we take our easy days easy. So our hard days can be hard. 20 minutes easy. Now in the last 15 minutes of that run, they have to do somewhere between four to five 20 second strides or later in the training, we'll bump it up to 25 second strides. Those 20 second strides, we say 5k effort. Do not have them look at their GPS watch to see if they're exactly running that pace. Just 5k effort running by feel. They do that for 20 seconds. Now the question is what pace do they run and, and how long is that rest before the next one? It's they, they go back to easy running pace. Okay. So if they've just done a stride and they don't slow down, they could, they go back to the easy running pace, their heart rate's going to be up for another 20, 30, you know, maybe even one, one minute or 90 seconds longer, but then they're going to be recovered enough that they can do that next stride. So we don't tell them, Hey, you only have 30 seconds or you need to take three minutes. It's going to be typically about a minute or 90 seconds or two minutes in, um, in between those strides. So that was a really good uh, question. And, and then Zach's got a question, Jay, What's your take on doing strides pre-run after warmed up a course instead of post-run sometimes or a sandwich run three by 150 before and three to four by 200 after? Yeah. Um, if Zach, if it was a workout day, we're, we're definitely running strides prior to a workout. And at some workouts, um, we would end with faster strides. What I, I was going to talk about this at, at, at the end of this evening, but I'm going to talk about it now. One of the reasons uh, one of the reasons my race pace workouts work so well is we're not just saying, Hey, we're, we're going to run, you know, eight by 400 at 3,200 meter pace. And the sixth, seventh and eighth aren't going to go that well, but we're going to take a break and we're going to run some really fast hundreds at the end. No, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to have longer reps at the end. We're going to be running really fast. The last 300, 200, 100 in that rep. If their fastest running comes in the reps at the end of the workout, they don't need to do, you know, they don't need to tack on more, more one twenties or one hundreds. Now, that being said, there are some workouts where I have kids do that. What I really liked by uh, about your three to four by uh, 200 after uh, Kelly Christensen coach at Niwot uh, high school, girls were second at NXN this weekend. Boys were fifth boys were an at large bid and they were fifth. Right. And then obviously Addison, uh, Addy Ritzenhine won. He is her coach. Uh, he, he does a day where they, I don't know if he calls it a threshold run or a tempo run, but they do that type of run. Then they spike up. Then they, they do three by 200 at lifetime, 1600 meter PR pace. So there's some boys on that team, you know, who are going to hope to run 408 at some point. So what's 408 for a 200? It's 31 seconds, right? And, and it, if, if you were to think about that right now, you know, you might have a boy who's at 430, but you want to run 408 at some point. Could he run a threshold run or, you know, in my workouts, could he do a progression run, take a break, spike up and, and run that? So, um, I, I, yeah, um, I think that would make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to come back to these questions. Yeah, this, this is really fantastic that everybody's still engaged and, uh, let, let's go into this for a second. Um, how do I want to do this? 
I want to do it like this. All right. So I want to talk about extending the aerobic stimulus with times that we just talked about. Jeff Bollet's warm up is 13 minutes once you understand it. Then let's say we did a progression run. We do eight minutes easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and this goes back to Zach's question, Zach, on our days where we're doing workouts, we do three by 20 second strides in the next seven minutes. So the first 15 minutes of the run, we have eight minutes easy, but then we do three by 20 second strides to get ready for this workout. So I, I, you know, your, your question was more like we do just warm up, then we do some strides. We just do this as one continuous run. So we're doing that in the first 15 minutes. Then we do a 25 minute progression run. You can read the document, learn about that. And then we do an easy five minutes. If you add that math up, that's a 45 minute run, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's a really good one. Now on a hard day, because it was a progression run, that would be a hard day for us. So now we're going to do 20 minutes of post run work. Okay. Because it's probably orange hard. If it was yellow hard, you have red and orange for free in the track training essentials for, to, to get the yellow and the green, which is what most kids will do most of the year. You have to, to be uh, enrolled in the track training system. But the bottom line is, you know, on the hard days, we're always taking about 20 minutes. So now we're at 78 minutes of uh, total activity. Somebody earlier tonight said, you know, what do I do with a 90 minute practice? And, and what I'm saying is you can get it done 78 minutes and they still have 10 minutes where they can socialize. Okay. So let, let's go in and look in this here. We've got 13 minutes, and then we've got the workout, which is uh, 45 minutes. There's no jogging, and we're straight into a 20-minute um, post-run work. So here's the math on that. 13, 45, 20. That's 78 minutes where they are, their heart rate has not gone down, okay? And I think that's what's really interesting. The run itself was only 45 minutes. Right. So, 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 so the amount of pounding that we had on their lower body is low, but, the, but in terms of building their aerobic engine, their heart rate was elevated for 78 minutes. And folks, the first 10 minutes of that 20 minute post run work is really hard. So, so they're, they're really getting a uh, great uh, aerobic, uh, a great aerobic stimulus there. So you really need to go back to the track training essentials, read this part, extending the aerobic stimulus. It's one of the uh, keys to, to why everything works. The other thing I want to highlight is think of what you get to observe during all this, right? You get to see movement during the warm up. If you're at a place where they're going to be running loops or, or they're going to go do, you know, the eight minutes and, and the, the seven minutes somewhere else, they're going to do their progression run, but they could come back and even finish that last five minutes on the track or, you, you know, around some fields. You can see what their mechanics look like. We don't want kids leaning over. We want kids running up tall with good posture, right? And then obviously you can see if they're mentally engaged in the post run work. If a kid is really tired, if you have a senior, uh, if you have a junior or a senior who's bought into this and, and now we're talking like, you know, April, let's say it's the first week in April. So fast forward three or four months and they're, they, you know, they don't look great when they end the progression run and they're a kid who's really bought into this doing the post run work and they just look bad in the uh, post run work. That's a great indication to you that this is a tired athlete, right? So what I'm trying to get you to say, to, to, to understand is that with my training system, when you have the workouts written out for you and when you understand the framework, it gives you, the coach, more time to observe your athletes. And that last example I'm using, that gives you a chance to say, hey, I maybe need to hold this athlete out of, out of the uh, next hard workout. Maybe if it's a, if it's a less important meet coming up, I'm going to hold them out of that meet as well. Okay. Final thing. The long run, when week one, the long run is, is 60 minutes. How long is the stimulus? 85 minutes, right? Because it's 13, then it's 60, and then it's, I said it's only 12 because we're doing the red post run work, which is the easiest one we do. Red hard is as easy as it possibly gets, still an 85 minute stimulus. And then this is what's really cool. If you just are patient and you get to week number five, 13, now a 70 minute long run, but, but again, they're doing orange post run and they might even be doing yellow. If you're in the track training system, that's 105 minutes, 105 minutes, hour, 45 minutes, right? This is a really long day. These kids are going to get fit just in, in that first week down to that fifth week. The other thing too, if we keep our, our hard days really hard, the distance they're going to cover in that 70 minutes is going to be longer than the 70 minutes they did back in September and in October. 
um, people who are in the cross country training system and the track training system can chime in here and explain that, Hey, once we buy into this, our long runs really, really, uh, get going. Okay. I want to catch up, make sure I'm in a good spot here before there's the next one. Okay. What we're going to talk about, talk about some things when consistency is key. And if you've read this book, if you know the principles in here, what I want to be honest about is that what the training that's in the track training essentials, but more importantly, in the track training system, the principles in here underlie that training. So what I'm about to share is a video from the track training system where I explain, hey, here's how some of these things, running by feel, hard days, hard, easy days, easy, and fast, faster, fastest, how these things apply to track, not just running, not just cross country, how it's going to apply specifically to track. So let's hop in here and do that. <clears throat> run by feel. This is absolutely huge. You need to have your athletes learn to run by feel, okay? All winter long, December, January, February, we are going to be doing aerobic runs. We're going to be doing challenging aerobic runs where they have to learn to run by feel. In this, and I, I love this GPS watch as much as all your, maybe not as much as all your kids, but I enjoy having this watch. I like having a heart rate monitor. It's fun to look at data on these watches, but we have to teach them and we have a progression long run to Farlick run to progression run to aerobic repeats to the 3090 Farlick. It progresses where it's going to teach these kids over the, the course of weeks and months to learn to run by feel. Running by feel is the right way to be training throughout the track season, but it's going to set them up even more. It's going to set them up in the cross country season to race really fast because obviously cross country is something where we have to race by feel. Okay. Track is a little bit different. We're going to train running by feel when we're doing these aerobic workouts. And then I'll get in, in, into this a little bit with the race pace, with the race pace workouts. But what's nice in track is we can get feedback 200 meters in, 400 meters in, 600 meters in, okay? I will talk about this a little more when I talk about the long runs and the fartlek runs. <clears throat> Just know this, if you have an athlete who you want to have a great high school career, obviously you do, but you want to have them run in college, we want to set them up to run as adults, learning to run by feel is an absolutely critical skill. Okay, do hard days hard and easy days easy. And there'll be an asterisk to this for the track training system. I firmly believe that your hard days need to be hard. And if we look at that in the winter, when we're doing a long run, when we're doing all those challenging, challenging aerobic workouts, let's make them hard. Let's make our easy days easy in terms of the effort of the run, but we're still doing, we're revving the engine, we're doing strides and we're doing post run work. And for your kids who are weaker, it's not going to be easy. And even your older kids, as we progress through all of our colors with the post run work, that won't be easy but it'll be easier than the hard days, right? And so we want this sinusoidal, right? Like a sine wave that you would graph out. We want that up and down. And then what happens is it goes up and down and up as long as we keep our easy days easy, okay? This is something that if you're a runner, it should apply to your own running as well. And I think what you'll see is that anytime you have a hard day for kids, they come back with an easy day and they look a little bit flat, give them another easy day and they should be able to run a harder day that that would be, that would be the third day or fourth day however you want to count it the asterisk is that there is a monday through friday plan and this is a plan that has worked really well for coaches in the track training system where we go hard on monday we go hard on friday and wednesday is an easy day or excuse me a medium day right so we're going hard on monday easy tuesday medium on wednesday easy thursday hard on friday I like that day, or excuse me, I like that week. But I also think we can just go hard Monday, we can go hard Thursday, we can go hard Tuesday, we can go hard Friday. You only need to go hard twice a week. This has been, there, there's all kinds of success stories in the track training system and the cross country training system with coaches making two really hard days per week and having the other days be easy days. And, and again, our easy day is not a short day, right? Because Jeff's warm up takes 13 minutes that we do the run, we're doing strides, we're doing post run work. Our 45 minute run, if we do 13 minutes with Jeff, 45 minutes for the run, now we're at 58 minutes and, and our strides were part of that easy day, but now we do 17 minutes for the post run work. Now we're at 75 minutes. So our 75, so what in your old system, the 45 minute run might've been a 60 minute day. 
our 45 minute run on a piece when they see it on the document is really a 75 minute day. Okay. So the easy days are easy, but they're not short. And, and I, I guess if I'm honest, they, they, they're, it's going to take your kids some time to adapt to the idea that man, our easy day is a 75 minute day. All right. got to practice running race pace or faster. This is one of, so I'd say the two big mistakes I see high school coaches making is that they're not revving the engine enough. We've already talked about that. You're going to do that, but they're not running enough race pace work. Okay. We're going to do a ton of that in the cross or excuse me, in the track training system. So we're going to have it obviously in, um, May, April, March in the competitive outdoor season running race pace but we're going to touch on it in February and January too, in terms of doing strides where we're running at race pace or faster. And if you're saying, Jay, what a 15 second stride, a 20 second stride, a 25 second stride at 1600 meter pace, that's not enough to be ready to, to run really well in March and April. Kids, high school kids adapt quickly to this type of work. And we just need to be touching on it as often as we can. And you will find that if you're in the Midwest or if you're in the Northeast or even in the uh, Northwest where, where it's cold and it's, you're not able to get in race pace workouts all the time. As long as you're really focused on doing these strides, you're going to have enough days where you can get those strides in and we'll be doing 1600 meter pace, 800 meter pace, 400 meter pace. And as long as you're getting those strides in, when it comes time to do the race pace work, we'll be able to do that. Finally, uh, let's use some easy math. If race pace for a young woman who's running 520 is 80 seconds per 400, right? So if it was 75 seconds per 400, she'd be running five minute pace, but she's running 520. So that's 80 seconds. We, and this is the example I use in the book. Let's say she's going to get down to 512. Okay. So that's 78, right? Per 400. So that's 39 per 200, right? So that's 19.5 for a hundred. You need to, <coughs> what you can do in track is you can have her run hundreds and two hundreds and even some four hundreds at that PR pace. So when it says in this book, run race pace or faster, we have to, we're always coming back to running faster. Okay. We want workouts, whatever you think they're going to be able to run in the race, whether it's 520 or a boy running 430 or what have you, they need to be finishing workouts fast and be able to run faster than race pace. And, and I'll, I'll get to another point that relates to that. Actually, so know that you could have gone further or faster. Both is next, but I want to skip ahead. Actually prepared for running fast, faster, fastest. This takes that to the next level of running race pace or faster. If we have a 1600, what I want you to think about for a moment is what if you had an athlete go with 11 at the 1100 meter mark, or another way to look at it is with 500 to go. So they've run one lap, they've run two lap. Now they've run on their third lap, back, first curve, back stretch, second curve. Now they've got 500 to go. What if they, and this is prior to the bell lap. What if they ran 200 meters fast? So now that's the home stretch, first curve, 200 meters faster, back stretch, second curve, coming off that second curve. Now their fastest running of the race, 100 meters. That's fast, faster, fastest. That is a great way to run 1600 meters. And just have that example in your mind about how you want workouts to go, right? Is we're, we're going to, these workouts in the track training system, they will always have kids doing that running fast, faster, fastest. Now, can kids always switch gears three times? No, but at least they can go race pace faster, or they can go race pace, switch gears. But I do think you want to empower your best runners, your senior runners, your junior runners who can really make an impact at the highest levels of your state. You need them to be able to switch gears in a 1600 three times. Now that first one where they're running some sort of race pace and it goes faster, that's maybe just to make, it, it's not going to be a big ballistic move. It's maybe just a move to get into a better position going in to that bell laugh. Okay. One more thing before we end this section, I think this is a good, this, this is called a two page spread or layout in the book. And this is one that you should show your kids. Um, now that the book's been out for what, two and a half years, um, fast, faster, fastest is the thing that is stuck in the kids' brains more than anything else. Now, the one I just talked about farther, faster, or both 
<laughs> and running by feel, they're all important. Running by feel and farther, faster, both, you could argue are, are even more important for the long-term development of the athlete. But man, we're talking about the track training system. We need to have kids already in January thinking when, when the season comes, when March, April, and May come, I'm going to be able to switch gears when I'm tired. All right. Thanks everybody for, for being here. We are, uh, we're at 55 minutes, 55 minutes, by the way, is a time I could never run for this run when I was an athlete at the university of Colorado called the dam run. That is not a curse word. There was literally, there was a little dam that would, uh, that backed up this little pond. And so it was five miles out, five miles back. Um, if you're doing the math on this, so, so that's a 10 mile run. If you could do it at six minute pace, you'd run 60 minutes. The best I could ever run was about 57 or 58 minutes. And if you're at sea level, you're like, wait, you're a college runner and you couldn't run 530 pace, which would be 55 minutes for 10 miles. And the answer is no. Um, I, I could not do that. So, uh, when I see 55 minutes, that's always what I'm thinking. All right. You have to understand that one of the things that 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 you can be a part of is having workouts. The, the word empower is really important. You want to empower kids with the ability to go fast, faster, fastest. And I have yet to meet a coach who's who's joined the track training system who already had those workouts in their in their bag of tricks, right? Most people have these workouts where, you know, it's, it's 1600 meter training and it's eight by 400. And we're going to do, we're going to do two sets of, uh, of, uh, four hundreds. We're going to do, um, you know, 460 seconds rest, 460 seconds rest, do four, take a big, big break, do four kids are decelerating in that second set and their slowest reps are seven and eight. What is, what are those kids practicing? They're practicing running slower than race pace at the end of the workout. We don't do that at all. And there's multiple ways we do it. Sometimes we do really long reps. Sometimes we're doing these shorter reps with floats. But the bottom line is fast, faster, fastest is part of every repetition for 1600 meter runners and 3200 meter runners. And if you've had success in cross country and you've sped up, that's fine. But doing it in the 1600, just like I said in that example with 500, with 500 to go, you want to empower the athlete with that ability. How many times? Have you been at a meet and the kids coming on the home stretch into the bell lap and you're like, go like in your, you might even say it out loud in your mind. You're saying go, right? Have you empowered them with the, the confidence that with 500 meters out, when they're starting to feel a little bit weird that they can speed up. Right? So, I mean, this is one of my favorite topics talking about race pace workouts this way and talking about how uh, we design them this way. But I really want you to take home that word empower, that your workout should empower kids with abilities that they may or may not have. Okay. So I, I think that's uh, really important. Let's uh, talk about goals. Um, this is not what I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about goals. Let, let's put this up here. Okay. We're going to talk about goals. We're going to talk about A, B, and C goals. Okay. A C, and this is a C, the letter C, goal. I'm struggling to say it. It's basically a dad joke in my mind. It's a C goal. Anyway, a C goal is something that's just a little baby goal. Okay. Something that neither you or the athlete could really be disappointed in because it's definitely a PR. So all of our goals are PRs. The next level, as you can probably guess, is the B goal. And the B is something that you'll be fired up about. You will both be really happy. You'll say, this season was a success. We're fired up. We really wanted to be able to do that. And then what is the A? The A is the big. Sometimes in business, they talk about the uh, stretch goal. And obviously, you've heard that in athletics too. I think what's great about our sport, and especially when we're looking at track, is we can really put a number on this, okay? We can really look at what that A goal is. All right, I wanna make things really simple with a, a male 1600 meter runner, okay? And, and, and I'll, I, I can talk about a female 1600 meter runner too. If you've got a boy and he's run 432, what is that, 68s? Let's just make this math really simple. Let's say a second a lot faster, 67s, 428. So that's our C goal, 428. Now let's run 66s. So 432 to 424, that's a pretty big jump. That's eight seconds. 
But I want to say that if you're doing the track training system and this young man is a junior or a senior, he can handle good volume, he's ready to go, and you're watching this in the winter, right? You're watching this in January or February, and this is a young man who's got opportunities in late April and in May to run faster. I think 424 and 66 is, is realistic. Obviously, what's that A goal? Oh my gosh, if he went from 432 to 420 or sub 420, maybe he runs 419, that's that big jump, right? If you have an athlete who has a junior, a, a, as a sophomore, and, and again, I know this is a really good sophomore, but we'll just use this example, who ran 432 and he runs 419, his life completely changes, right? Or a better example is you have the the, the kid who's the junior who run, ran 432, and then at the end of their junior year, they run 419, it just changes what they are going to be able to do in the recruiting process in terms of reaching out to coaches. So we've got the C, the B, and the A. The important point to talk about here, because I, I don't know if I'll always come back to this. To, to, to me, this is one of the assumptions I always make, but I need to be clear about it. We are always in our workouts trying to run the rhythm of the A goal. So the boy who could run 68s is going to groove 65s. Does that make sense? 38 second 200s, or excuse me, 34 second 200s become 32 fives and a lot of 32s. And if you're thinking 32, that's 64, that's 416. Yeah, let's get him ready to run 416. We're hoping he runs 416 at some point in his life, and it would be great if he does it in high school with you, right? We're going to rewind that because that's probably the most important thing you can learn tonight. Run faster. If, I think for you need to have kids running the rhythm of the A goal right now. If now one thing I that, that was not in here, you have to have realistic goals, right? But but I, I think we were very realistic. We had an athlete who could run 432. I think we you have to be happy with 428. That that C goal is something that is a goal is is a PR. Our goals are always PRs. Then we're looking at B and then we're look, looking at uh, A. But I, I, I mean, we don't have to look at the video one more time. I, we can just make, make this point. Okay. 67s is 428. And that's our C goal, right? And I'm saying 65s, 420 is a fantastic PR. But 65s breaks down to 32.5 for the 200s. Let's just run 32s. Let's run 64s. Let's run 208. Let's run 216 pace all the time. Who knows? Maybe 432 goes goes to 416. John O'Malley's out here. He could get a kid at some point to go from 432 to 416. Maybe not in one year, but I, I mean, crazier things have happened. You do the athlete a disservice if you are not. Oh, sorry. I hit the mic. You do the athlete a disservice if you don't have them running that A goal pace often. Okay, now are we going to have unrealistic workouts where they can't hit the times? No, we're absolutely not going to do that. But one of the things that's in this track training system is the rhythm of running faster all of the time. Now, often what we're going to do is we're going to start with that 428 pace, that C pace, and then we're going to move into B and A throughout the uh, throughout the uh, throughout the workout. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I had to put this up here. I put it up. And then, um, at the banquet, I explained, this is, uh, Kevin saying at the banquet, I explained to families how we extend the aerobic stimulus with the pre and post workout routines. They all looked at me like I was a genius. These families are bought in, man, that is huge. And I'm going to, um, put, put, uh, coach O'Malley. He's actually going to show up later in the presentation. But 100% champion eight 1600 meter runners are always closing a huge negative split. Um, the other thing I want to want to share about Coach O'Malley, who's at Sandberg High School, who you know, if you guys don't know him, he is solidly in the top, you know, two, five, ten people that everybody says um, are the best high school coaches. And and I think you know he's somebody that's a good friend. And I think buy-in is something that we often talk about. This idea that you have to have the parents bought in. Right. I think that's really and, and I could talk about being a parent um, in that I had a daughter run high school cross country this year as a freshman. And uh, yeah, I really think getting your parents bought in is, is really important. All right. So we're going to go into one last um, we're going to go into one last video and we're going to talk about. Um, actually, I think are we done with that? All right. 
if anybody has questions, you can start popping them in. We're, we're going to wrap things up here. Um, we have a, a no prior training plan that's in, let's see, um, in here in the uh, track training essentials. In here is going to be a no prior training plan. That's something you want to go back and understand. Um, I'm going to talk about that when I come out with version, where is it? Uh, when I come out with version two of this. So that, that, that'll be in here too, but, um, okay. Here's what, what we need to talk about now is there are multiple ways you can improve as a program. There, there, there's a lot of ways that, that you can take your program to the next level. I want to challenge you tonight to change how you view training and be willing to do things you've never done before. If you want to do things you've never done before. Now, this is one of my favorite phrases for both athletes and coaches and where I think people take it wrong. There, there's a question here about double thresholds. If, if we, if a kid comes to you and says, I, you know, I want to run a PR and I need to do things I've never done before. And you say, we need to do double runs and double thresholds. That might not be the next logical step for that athlete. So I'm going to share something. I just got this in the mail today. This is the alumni C club license plate thingamajog, uh, thingamajig, jig, whatever. Um, I was an athlete at the University of Colorado. I coached at the University of Colorado. I was a 5,000 meter runner. I was a slow cross country runner. I was not an 800 meter runner and I was not a, a 1,500 meter specialist. I, as a post collegiate athlete or a post collegiate coach, coached professional runners to make USATF championships in the 1500, in the 800. I also coached a woman who won the um, USATF indoor national title at 3000 meters. And in that race, she beat the current American record holder at that distance. Okay. But what had to happen be between me being an athlete who did it the CU way and understood, you know, literary training and whatnot, which is fantastic for cross country, fantastic for the 5,000. That doesn't work as well for 800 meters. It doesn't work as well for milers. If you want to fight with me, in the comments and say, but Arthur Lydiard, da, 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 da. Yeah, Arthur Lydiard had Peter Snell. Peter Snell was a freak, right? We, we should never use the freakish athlete as the example of how the trainings work. We should use the example of a lot of athletes and how they have trained, okay? I'm going to go back to uh, Coach O'Malley since he's on here. He's had 10 different young men run 4, 10, or faster. If you're a coach, and I don't care how many years you coach, if you coach 40 years, Coach O'Malley's coached about 20 years, imagine every other year you have a 410 guy, right? Or faster, right? There's a way he's training athletes with speed and, and with a lot of, of, of changes of pace. There, there's a focus on the neuromuscular system. There's a focus that's appropriate metabolically in December and January that's different than what we want to do in, in March, April, and May, Okay. And the bottom line is the track training system that I'm about to share with you is a system that is different than what you're doing now that is going to do three things. It's going to keep kids injury free. Now, if you're like, ah, we haven't had that many injuries, I'm going to push back. Most people have injuries, okay? And we can take that down to zero or close to zero. If kids are injury free, what happens? They run PRs. You want them to run PRs, they want to run PRs. So injury free running PRs. And then the final thing is it's going to save you time. It's going to save you time planning. Go back to that slide where I'm saying you need to observe what athletes are doing as they warm up, as they're coming back from their run, as they're doing the uh, post-run work. You need to get really good at watching an athlete come to practice and reading the signs that, oh my gosh, this is an athlete that's maybe on the edge of overtraining and I need to uh, dial things back. So let's hop in here and just, just look at some things. Um, Where's the uh, screen share? I'm talking to myself. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're going to look at what's in the track training system. Oh, that's the video. That's what we're going to add right now. 66 is, is realistic. I run four night is going to every year. So, so the boy who could run 68s at some point in his life acting in early December. I did not tee this up. Well, you're about to look inside the track training system. If, if you enroll tonight, this is exactly what's in the track training system. This is exactly what's in there. So sorry for that. Uh, that wasn't a very good, that was uh, three. 
By the time we get to late December, there will be some updates here. I'm going to update some new training and I'm going to update some videos that's going to walk through what the various race pace workouts are. To be absolutely clear, if you're here live tonight, you have to understand that you're getting a lot of information for free in the track training essentials. You're getting five weeks of training, you're getting that for all these different athletes. But what you're but but that's five weeks. And we are doing 24 weeks of training. So the math on that is roughly 20% or the real way to look at it is there's 80% that you're not getting. Okay. And then one other thing too, is you're getting the red post run and the orange post run. You've got all the videos for that. You've got the PDFs for that. Most of your kids, most of the year, if they're serious, they're going to be on the yellow and the green. You don't have that right? So I just want to be clear. Hey, I, I've done my best to give you a lot of value tonight, but what we're about to see here is this is the real training. This is the real deal right here. This is the stuff that if you want to take your program to the next level, you've got to do this uh, training in here. Consistency is key. New book coming out in, in February. I will update that. It's really the uh, first 15 chapters are going to be the same. I'm adding three chapters, mental skills, health sciences, and I'm going to talk about the recruiting process. All of the, all of everything in that video is going to be the uh, same in terms of fast, faster, fastest, running by feel, all that stuff. Four elements, you understand that stuff. Post run work. This is just to give you an idea of where you're going to find that stuff. When you sign up for the track training system, you get Jeff Belay's essential videos, and that's got a lot of the information there too. Okay, and then we already talked about A, B, and C goals. Then I go into a little video about all the aerobic workouts. I think that even though you've read that long document that explains those, I think these videos are really helpful. Circuits, that's in the track training essentials. But here, you got a little taste of this video, the 24-week calendar overview. You got a little taste of the daily plans. But as you can see, 25 minutes and 30, 38 minutes, we're looking at over an hour of content. I shared about, I don't know, 10 or 12 minutes tonight. Then in the 1,600-meter fundamental calendar, this gives you an idea of for the 1600, the 3200, and the 800. What we have here is we have these documents that you download. You click this, and that's the real training, right? That's the one that's got all the workouts in it. And then we do this for phase one, two, and three. We talked about those phases, but yeah, that's this is the real meat of it. And here, 3200 meter is a little bit different. And then we can click on here for 800 meter. For the 800 meter, we've got the fundamental calendar. I've also got a low volume calendar. And that's for the kid who oftentimes is playing basketball in the winter, can run for you, can run a great leg on the four by four, is truly going to be an 800 runner who's on your four by eight, probably not going to run the 1600. That training is perfect for them. So we've got that training plan in there too. And then in here, we have the various uh, daily plans. This is every single day for 24 weeks, 1,600, 3,200, 800. It's literally every single day that, that they have the no prior training plan. We do the same thing. There's a phase one start. So let's say you have an athlete join you next week, right? They're, they're with you for one week and maybe a couple of days prior to the uh, Christmas break, but they didn't do anything. Maybe they even ran cross country, but their season ended early October, mid-October, and now they haven't done anything for basically six weeks. You would put them on the no prior training plan, but we're, but that's in the phase one start. The phase two start is different. That's where a kid comes out for your program, not having done anything all winter, and like in the state of Colorado, it's the end of February when the official state practice starts. That's for the athlete that comes out then. And if you think about it, that athlete needs a different plan because they're going to have a meet early March, right? So they have to train in a much different way. And, and in many ways, we're going to be more conservative with the uh, workouts we're doing because that meet as is going to serve as those main workouts for those kids. We've got all the warmups, all the post run work. We have some weight room routines in here. These are, are simple ones. I've got a little video here. Why, how would the weight room work in the track training system? It's not something that you need to do, but it's something I added last year because a lot of coaches wanted it. I think sometimes we go to the weight room too early because we think that it's a must do when really we want kids having great control of their body and we want to do a lot of body weight work first. Okay. Oh, and then now this is the key part. So these are the workouts here. I'm going to be adding videos to explain each workout. These are really detailed documents that really I explain what workout is. And then later in December, I'll be adding videos for those. 
Okay, this says cross country training system alumni can do speed development. And I really like sticking to that because we know if somebody did the cross country training system in the summer and in the fall, the kids have done all the post run work, they've done all the strides, right? The flip side is there's going to be some of you that say, hey, I want my 800 meter runner doing some speed development and I think I can do that safely. And you absolutely can. So there's, there's a 1600 meter calendar in here that has, this would be for your kid who's a true middle distance runner, who's a true 800, 1600 kid who can run a great leg on the four by eight. And we're gonna have them doing speed development all winter long on, on Thursday when they're building their aerobic engine on Tuesday and Saturday. And then that's about, oh, and then webinars. And then, oh no, these are other training principles that the, these are things that that I really think you should watch, but obviously there was a, a lot of content leading up to this point, and this is just 24 minutes. And then this is what I do, 2023 webinars. You can go through and watch all that stuff. I, I, I rip out the audio sometimes, that's just a term they use. So like you can listen to this. If you'd rather listen to this and watch it, you can. But then all those webinars, and I, I think that's a really good point that if you can't make any of those live, I, so I record those. If I record them on the Saturday, you got to give me till about Monday to upload it. It, it seems like it, it would be an, an easier process, but sometimes the downloading from the computer and whatnot takes a while. But the bottom line is if you miss a webinar, it, if we do five webinars, sometimes I do a bonus one, but if we do five webinars, there's you're going to miss one here and there. It's easier, I find, in the track season in the first few months. We're going to do one in December and January and February. I like to front load them. We're not going to do one in May because you're just slammed in May. And you also have questions, if you think about it, in January and February about, hey, what should my training system, what should my training plan look like? when we get into April and I've got a big invitational, but I have some meets that are less important during the week, you wanna ask those questions in February, not wait till April. So we'll do December, January, February, March, April, might put a bonus one in there. Bottom line is I like doing them Saturday mornings, but then later in the track season when you might have meets on Saturday, then I'll do them like on a, a Wednesday night. Personal information, I'm single dad, have my girls Monday and Tuesday, so that's why I'm always doing Wednesday. And if I, I know sometimes people have meets on Wednesdays. Okay. I, I think that's a great introduction into the, what the track training system is. If you're watching that and you're like, man, I really want to see what the training is. Yeah. Oh, oh here, here's a good example too. Some people say, why isn't there, is there some sort of insurance policy or refund policy? I can't have that for the track training system for a, a very simple reason. If somebody buys it, they can download every single document in there and they can ask for a refund. That's just not going to work. I, I, I can tell you this, hundreds of people are in the track training system. Hundreds of people are in the cross country training system. Nobody has asked for a refund. All right. So I think you can feel really good between reading the testimonials and there, there might even be some people on here live this evening that, 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 that can chime in with how this has, how this has worked for them. Okay. So let's leave the recording. Let's go into the live questions. All right. So there you go. Track training system. Um, yeah, I'm going to walk you through a couple testimonials. I, I think sometimes people, if they're a veteran coach who've, who's won a state cross country title, they think, why would I invest in this? My system works. I don't need anything new. There's another type of coach who's a new coach who says, oh my gosh, am I going to be overwhelmed? Is there going to be too much information? So we're going to look at both of those coaches and talk about uh, how they can both be helped. So this is one of my favorite coaches. And I'm not, you know, I mean, I should probably be, uh, I should probably be, I, I, <laughs> This is a coach, Coach Collins, who I love, and, and maybe I shouldn't share something from a, uh, a coach that I feel so fondly about, but but I'll, I'll just read this. Using your framework, I re re rewrote our middle distance training. For context, we were the 2021 state champions in cross country and track for boys and runner-up for girls, but much more was needed. We competed this weekend for the state meet and won both boys and girls. That included Four by eight win for the boys. Girls were second. Both school records. 1,600 boys first and second. Uh, girls second, new record. And then I'll just skip ahead. He had a runner go from 424, and that's obviously a good runner, down to 414. And a young woman who went from 517 to 503. Okay. She also went from 1125 
um, to 10.57. So those are big jumps. So I think we can say that, hey, a coach who's a veteran coach can get better with the uh, track training system. Now, in Coach Collins, but but Coach Collins is a coach who's willing to do what we're talking about. He's willing to do things he's never done before to do things he's never done before. That 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 424 kid to go to 415, part, you know, most of it is the yeah, kid working hard, but there's a plan, there's a system, there's there's a progression of the workouts, and there's the right workouts. You know, sometimes people like in consistency is key. One, th this is a book for kids, right? This isn't for you. And it says, understand there are dozens of ways to train, right? Um, you, you know, this idea that there are no magic workouts, that there's dozens of ways to train. But you know what? For you as the coach, there are only a handful of ways to train. There's not a hundred ways to train that are going to lead to excellent outcomes, okay? Are there more than two or three? Yes. But are there 50? I don't think so. Okay. Um, now let's look at uh, what a coach who was newer when they joined the track training system. And this coach joined when it was brand new, which was two years ago. Um, and, and she's a great coach. Jay, just wanted to let you know how beneficial the track training system has been for me this season. I've purchased other digital books and courses to help me become a better coach. Sadly, most of them have ended up as unused digital files on my computer because they weren't easy to follow or implement. Jay has designed the track training system to be usable. Available on an app, the videos and training plans are broken down into easy to find sections within the track training system, making it quick to find what you need, print or watch and implement. Many of the videos I watched multiple times and I'm gonna just go down to the bottom. Everything Jay said was in the track training system was there. The training plans, pre and post run work, webinars, videos, even the PRs. Can't wait to get going with the cross country training system this year, uh, Nanette Fawcett. And um, yeah, I just feel like if if somebody's newer and if you're on this call tonight, if you're on this webinar and you're a little bit, into, it, it, there was a lot of information tonight, absolutely. And I'm gonna go back to this video and put time codes on it. So if you wanna go back to any of the various sections, you can do that, okay? Will the track training system take time? Yes, in that testimonial, is a coach who took the time to, you know, and, and you saw the uh, video of what that would actually looks like inside. You got to start at the top. You got to go through the bottom. It's going to take more than an hour. It's going to take more than three hours. It's not going to take 20 hours, right? But it's going to take some amount of time for you to commit to saying, I'm going to learn a different way to train. Okay. Now, oh, <laughs> um, Josh says no refund needed. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. Hey, just in case I, I don't forget, and we're going to talk more about it, but I'm just going to put it here in the uh, chat now. Here's the link to the track training system. Um, if I was a better digital entrepreneur and digital course person, we would be watching this on, instead of on YouTube Live, we'd be watching it on a web page, and there'd be a button beneath it, and there'd be testimonials, and be all fancy. If you're interested in it, you got to click on that link. Um, and yeah, so so I'm just going to share one other thing. And, and I, I'm going to preface this by saying, this person is uh, not completely neutral to Jay Johnson. This person also is not going to give their testimonial unless they 100% believe in the thing they're talking about, okay? So with that in mind, we're going to hear from Coach O'Malley. He, this was um, a coach sent him an email recently saying, hey, I've, I've heard about Jay, Jay's track training system. Do you think it's worth it? I mean, it was, it, it was you know, that, that was basically the uh, gist of the email. And here's what Coach O'Malley said. Yes, I would definitely recommend Jay's training program. The training and access to him is honestly not available in any way from any other resource. He's got a great training philosophy, and he also provides great webinars and answers any questions you may have. Anything else is not even close because you read the book or watch the video, and that's it. And there are endless nuanced issues that present itself as a coach that you come across, and Jay is essentially a partner along the way. The training plans are really great and has plenty of pace variety, individual event modifications, neuromuscular and speed development, and it does a great job of hitting both metabolic and mechanical needs of running. He's constantly giving more. John O'Malley is on my, is on my cell phone here. 
He's a friend, and he's also not going to say that. I mean, he he took the time to go through it, and that's what he thinks about. The other thing that he and I have talked about is that I would have bought my course because I wanted to speed up the learning curve. That's really what this is. I mean, it, it it's going to make an impact this year, absolutely. What it's also going to do, if if you're in this for 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 the long game, if you love coaching, if you love going to the track, if you love going to the cross country course and seeing kids get better, and you're in in this for two years, for five years, for for ten years, for twenty years, this is gonna you're, you're gonna jump five years right now. Okay, I mean I'm getting I got goosebumps telling you that. That's what's so, excuse me. That's what's so cool about this. I mean, in some ways, like I'm gonna be fine in life if you buy it or you don't buy it. What I want to help you understand tonight is if you enroll in the cross country training system, excuse me, in the track training system, you are going to have a different outcome over the next five, 10 years. And it's going to speed you up. Could you get there on your own? Maybe, you know, there, there, there's a question in here about double thresholds and double runs. Yeah. You could experiment with that and you could get kids hurt. And then that kid has a bad, had as a bad experiment experience. And then you, you know, you learn something because you take notes, but for that individual athlete, it, it it doesn't work out. So bottom line is, um, you know, tonight there, there are two things. Uh, we're talking on Tuesday night until Friday, you can get Boulder running clinics videos, 2018, all the way to 2023. I put it in the chat. It didn't come out very right. Very well. Timo Moster, Doug Souls, you know, number one, number two at, at Nike Cross Nationals. Kelly Christensen has the winner at Nike Cross Nationals. Team is second. Jeff Mezer um, coaches the boy who won Nike Cross Nationals. So just this past weekend, you have all those coaches who are part of it. Shannon Thompson is the mental performance coach for NAU. She's amazing. She's spoken at the clinic as well. You get 60 plus videos. All these videos each year sold for $95. I only sell them once a year. And that's at the end of January after the clinic. All those videos are bundled together, I've bundled them for $2.95, but you can't buy them tonight. Okay. If you enroll in the track training system by Friday, and, and again, like these, you know, these, these people who do webinars for a living would say, you have to offer it tonight. No, we'll, we'll wait till Friday. And it's, and it's all set up automated. If you enroll in the track training system, you just get all those videos, 65 videos worth $2.95. They'll be on sale later in January for $2.95, but you can't buy them tonight. But here's the big key. Consistency is key. I'm coming out with a second edition. It's going to be on Amazon in February. I'll have it ready to sell to teams in May. If you enroll tonight, only tonight, and I'm not going to do this tomorrow, on Wednesday morning, this does not exist. But if you, if you enroll tonight, I'm going to send you seven copies of the new book, and so now your varsity cross country team going into the summer all has a book. And you and I both know that if you have, you know, 14 kids or 21 kids, those kids can, uh, can share that book too. And, and that's only tonight I'm offering that. So if you're watching the recording, that'll, this will be uh, an example of why you should come to these things live. Um, all right. So we have a lot of, we have a, a lot of questions that, that, that I can go through. Um, I really think, you know, in terms of a hard sell, what I'm trying to encourage you to do, if, if, if it's all going to make sense for you, is to enroll in a system that's going to take your program to the next level. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in here uh, one more time and then we'll just start taking questions. You guys are awesome. Endurance coaches are awesome because uh, it's an hour, it's 127, you know, so here we are. Um, 87 minutes in and everybody's still, um, <laughs> um, this is what Josh says. Take my buddy, my, <laughs> my own son who runs for me, love the book, but I need more. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely great. Mike said, you know, he's been coaching for 46 years. I wish I had, um, access to this, you know, 40 years ago. Um, all right. What question? How about this? Feel free to just paste your question back in again. I know we had some runners this. I really like this one from Callum. You know, basketball players, Callum, I and and, and I'm gonna assume too that that you might be at a smaller school where you have athletes who can run cross country, are important on the basketball team, and then are gonna be important on your four by eight. We have, you know, this no prior training uh plan for those athletes that come out into February. I was on a, a basketball team that was good. So I didn't even get to start track my senior year until March. And it was bad for, it was fun for basketball. It was bad for track because I don't know if you do this in your state, you had to take an automatic week off. 
And the idea is it was a, a shortened year. So we have that training for those kids. And, and the, even though they've been playing basketball, even though they've had all those impacts, you know, running up and down the court, mostly doing the plyos of uh, going up for rebounds and landing and whatnot, we still have to be careful with volume and intensity so we don't have any lower leg injuries, right? Um, and, and again, so where is it? It's in the, the track training system, and I've got workouts um, for that. I like this question, Josh. Um, the, you, you know, he's asking about how do I pick a program for the 800, 1600, four by eight kid who also wants to run the 3200? One of the things we didn't talk about, and, and this is this idea of the five pace system. I don't use that in the track training system officially, but I think it's a great mindset to have. We're going to really focus on the 1600 for most kids. Okay. Especially freshmen and sophomores. If you, and I, I talked about this in the live class back on Saturday, um, I, I, I'm realizing I should link to that too, but I, I talked about, you know, in that class, if you focus on 1600 meter runners, the next six months, fast forward to next fall, you'll have a great cross country team. When you focus on the 1600 kids, learn how to run different races, go out hard and hold on, run a tactical race where maybe it's slow for three laps. And then, then kids are just, j just ripping that last lap. But the bottom line is 1600 meters. They should be good at the 800. They should be pretty good at the 3200. And then a 1600 meter runner will be good at 5k. But what too often happens is they can't run a good split on the uh, four by four. And this system is going to allow you to put your distance runners, if you need them, on that four by four. More importantly, we're going to try and get a B, a C, a D four by four. And Kelly Christensen at NIWAT does this with his team. He, he tells the meet director, hey, I want as many four by four relays as you'll let me have. I want all my distance runners ripping a 400 at the uh, end, end of the meet. That, 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 that's something that I, I really highlight. Um, that question with double thresholds, um, I want to put it up here. Actually, we'll, we'll take Jennifer found is somebody who's in the track training system and in the cross country training system. My varsity kids did running lane and are currently taking a week off. Could I start them back Monday with the progression on Tuesday? We are eight weeks from indoor state, 20 weeks from outdoor state. Um, I really like, in in uh, this is in the track training essentials, but you can also just find it if you just Google break cross country to track. So I'm really going to want two weeks. Now, now if you if they did nothing for one week, are they going to run in week two? Absolutely. They're going to run three times in week two, maybe cross train a few, a few times as well. And, and I know it's easy to say, you know, we're only eight weeks away from indoor state, but, but if we really want athletes running their fastest in May, which is what we want, with, they can run indoor meets and they'll still run fast those last couple indoor meets, but we need, and a lot of this is not only physiologically, do they need this two weeks, but they mentally, I mean, running lane means that they ran into December. That's a long season. Jennifer, I know your kids were serious about running in June and they ran all the way to December gives them some time. And, and you need the time too, as a coach to, to be away from them for a little bit, just take one more week uh, follow that training plan. Just Google break, you know, my name break between cross country and track. Okay. And I, 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 th I think that's really a good one. Um, okay. Let's take this one. What is a piece of advice you can give runners who are going to be racing two or more events in one meet mile and three K would it be a good idea for someone to do in between those events? Ah, that's awesome. Um, I'm not going to share it here. It's actually, I, I think it's on my website somewhere. But I, I have I shared the warm up for 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 two events. Before the first event, we do the full warm up. Then we run the event. Then we do a shortened warm up, but we still do a lot of pieces of the warm up. Then we run event number two, and then every day that we're at a meet, we do some uh, post run work. We don't do challenging post run work, but we do a lot of hip mobility. Um, Jay, thoughts on when an athlete could be ready for a double threshold workout or save this for college and the pros. Bill, thanks for asking the question. Yes, save it for college and the pros. We do such a bad job. And, and Bill, this isn't you. I'm saying we, you know, anybody who cares about running. And I, I do it. I mean, I, I do it as well. Like I... I want to be on Instagram and see what the Bowerman Track Club's doing, seeing see what 10 Man Elite is doing, especially Dathan Ritzenhain and the on uh, team. I mean, I don't know if you saw the, the, those, those videos from the CU Indoor Facility last year where he's running around the infield. Oh, my gosh, that's an amazing video. But to look at what he's doing with those athletes. So let's take 
Joe Klecker, uh, the uh, first guy he signed for that group. That guy was running at CU for five years, got up to 100 miles a week, and did that over and over and over and over. Can Joe Klecker do a double threshold run? Absolutely. Should your sophomore and junior, is it their next logical step? That's what we got to focus on. What is the next logical step? And for, it, it, there, there's almost the chance that somebody on here tonight has an athlete for whom double thresholds are the next logical step is pretty much zero. Like unless you coached a kid who is at NXN this weekend or is running at Foot Locker next weekend and is already running 60 or 70 miles a week, I don't think you need to be focused on that. There's it, Let's look at the low hanging fruit. How about they sleep more? How about they have nutrition that's maybe a little bit better than what some, some high school athletes, excuse me, high school students have? Um, and I don't like to get into nutrition too much, but I think for some athletes, I mean, if they have a horrible diet, just, just having a salad three or four times a week and getting some good protein, that might be the low hanging fruit rather than something that's shiny and fancy and sophisticated. So, so no triple thresholds either. <laughs> that's awesome. I like that. Um, Hey, Bill chime in where you're from. I'm curious what time zone you're in to be making jokes. Cause it's, uh, it's eight Oh five, my time. I'm, I don't know if I can make jokes now. Um, hey, in case you're curious too, um, I'm in this office space. A lot of the track training system videos were in my basement. Um, I shouldn't say basement. It looked probably cooler than a basement, but in terms of the books and the trophies and the plants. Um, so I'm going to get some plants in, in this office as well. Um, I have an asbestos issue in my 1959 house and uh, yeah, live in, in a really nice little rental for a few months. So, um, All right. I'm going to put it in one more time. Bottom line is, is the track training system. Uh, multiple people, and I didn't prompt them to say this, they said it's a game changer. Um, and that's obviously a, a really good. Oh, how, how about let's look at one more thing. Um, my business coach says I shouldn't say, share. Oh, I should have showed you this. So it's one payment of $4.95, lifetime access. And I'll go back up here. Here's real, what's really important is, sorry, let's remove this, add this. Okay. You have lifetime access to it. Okay. And you pay once you own it forever and you get lifetime updates. Okay. So this is a one payment thing. And I have a business coach who's telling me I shouldn't show you this part, but I'm gonna show it to you in a moment. Um, one payment of $4.95. You can also do three payments. I don't do the Boulder Running Clinics videos with the three payments. Every once in a while, I have somebody take advantage of the fact that they could get all of it for $1.95 and then they don't make the uh, other payments. So that's not fair. Um, you get the 24 week plans, 24 weeks for $800, $1,632. I, I'm not going to go through all that. You, you guys saw what was in it. But this is the, the testimonial that my business coach says I shouldn't share because it talks about the price. This is Wesley Bell saying, hey, $4.95 is a lot of money, especially for high school teachers and coaches. But spending that amount one time for the track training system is the single best investment a coach can make. It is easy to use, and Jay provides clear instructions on how to execute each day. Just as important, he provides the right amount of explanation that you can give to your runners. The track training system also creates a partnership with Jay and a network of other high school coaches who are crazy accomplished and helpful. The best part is you will no longer be alone in coaching. Jay's level of support is off the charts great, and you see a collaboration around training that is safe, progressive, and flexible for six events. The best part is that such smart, synthesized training allows you to spend even more time on building relationships with your runners. Track training system is worth every cent. And uh, if my coach... Uh, Forrest is watching tonight. Um, I just feel like that's the biggest thing that's holding people back, right? Like you, you want better training. You want to help your kids. And I think that testimonial is the one that, that, that can help basically alleviate the anxiety. If there is anxiety about the fact that, Hey, it, it's 495. Is that worth it? And, uh, it, it, it absolutely is. Um, Oh, Todd, this is really nice. I'm going to put this up here. Todd says, the best part is when Jay takes your meet schedule and helps with your training within that schedule. A game changer for my program, both in cross country and track. Um, and then Josh added track training system to my cross country training system. And now I'm stuck coaching until I get all 14 into state next year in cross country. All right. 
All right. Um, yeah, so Bill is in New York. I love that. Um, my daughter ran, oh, at NXN in 2002. Team was 11th at NXN in 2003. I do not coach them, but but coaches some on the club team. Awesome, Bill. Yeah, so he's in the East Coast. It's 10.09. Uh, 10.09, that's about the time I ran as a freshman for 3,200 meters. Um, so, you, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I was able to walk on at the University of Colorado and my PRs were 9.45 and 4.25. Think about how slow, and granted, this is back in the mid-90s, but is, isn't that amazing? I was I was talking to a friend of mine who's a high school coach who had a boy at Arcadia run. He might have broken 8.50, but he was well under nine minutes. What's crazy about this young man is he was running only 40, maybe 45 miles a week last year. Imagine having a kid running 40 to 44, 45 miles a week running under nine minutes. Um, okay, Tim has a question. Advice for kid coming back from eight weeks off from mid XC season injury. How to modify ramp up. Big goals in 18 to 20 weeks, but maybe too soon. No. It, hey, one cool thing, and I learned this about my my – I, I, what I've learned about, you know, middle school and high school runners is they bounce back quick. T or T Tina, I'm sorry. I said, Tim, Tina, make sure this, this student has a diet where they're getting in enough calories. Don't worry too much about is it enough vegetables, enough protein. Want to, just make sure that, that, they, that calorically they're in a good spot. Make sure they're sleeping a lot. We're not talking about seven hours a night. I really think we're looking at eight or nine hours a night. Okay. That's the low hanging fruit. Get that taken care of. I think when you do that, the chance of staying injury free really goes up. And then you do need a progression. And I'll be honest, you wouldn't have to pay for the track training system tonight to get five weeks that's going to set you and this athlete up for, for a great season. After that five weeks, you're, you're not going to have the training. But um, you know, study those progressions, put them on the no prior training plan. They're going to be doing things like circuits and whatnot that's going to keep the volume really low. Um, but yes, that it is if the question is, is it realistic 18 to 20 weeks from now for this athlete to be rocking, to be running PRs? Yes. Is it realistic for them to be healthy four or five weeks from now and running? Absolutely. Yes. Ah, Christopher just signed up. Awesome. I will look forward to, uh, Oh, one thing I do, I send everybody a copy of consistency is key. This is crazy. Um, so be, because it's square, I'm the one who I'm, I'm the publisher, but I had to print these. So, you know, print 3000, 4000, 5000 at a time. And then I send them to a fulfillment place, sends them to Amazon. I'm running out at the fulfillment places in Denver and I'll send you this either via Amazon or from the fulfillment place, but I'm probably going to run out before the second edition is ready in February. And I was freaking out about that for a while. And I thought that's going to be fine. If, you know, people can't buy it for a while, um, but you will get one sent to you. Oh, and this whole deal about um, when when you purchase it tonight, you automatically get those videos. That's just this cool automation where you'll get emails and it'll say, you, you know, be added to your profile. But I'll send everybody who signs up tonight, I'll send you an email tomorrow. We'll just do a simple Google form, name, mailing address, and then I, I, I can't get those books to you in February because just like this book, I have to have a printer. Um, it's a printer in Michigan. They do a great job and they're going to print, you know, several thousand. Um, so I have to wait until May to get those to you. Um, you'll get eight. Yes, you'll get eight. You'll get eight, Josh. Absolutely. Cause you already got your one and, and you'll get, get seven. So, um, I think that's probably good. Jen, Jennifer, it's so good to see you. Here, here's a quick story about Jennifer found her husband is Sean found. Sean found was like a God in Boulder. When I was a freshman at the university of Colorado, he was a post collegiate runner. He had run at CU. I, I have goosebumps. I mean, I literally have goosebumps saying this. Sean found had run under eight minutes for three K. This is when nobody did that. And I know, you know, people do that now. He had, nobody had done that. And indoors, he'd run something insane, like, you know, 1335 or 1330, something really insane too. Here he is as a post-collegiate runner. He wins the Rocky Mountain Shootout. If you've read Running with the Buffaloes, you know that the Rocky Mountain Shootout's a race, but that was on the easy course. The, the OG ori original course had the real Jawbone Hill. And again, in Running with the Buffaloes, we talk about Jawbone Hill. It was not hard. This Jawbone Hill was crazy. There's literally a cow skull at the top of the hill I don't want to gross anybody out, but that's why it's called Jawbone Hill is because of the 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 jawbone of the cow. Sean crushes everybody, wins that race. So I just think he's amazing. And this is uh, late September. Okay, 
my college girlfriend, she's going to Notre Dame. I'm at CU. She breaks up with me and I'm like heartbroken, right? I mean, I'm just heartbroken. And Sean found like the king of Boulder on an easy run as we're leaving the track and it's cold. It must be like November, December. It must have been this time of year. He's, it's just so sweet. He's like telling me, you know, women will come and go. Girls will come and go. It's no big deal. You're fine. Um, I don't even know if Jennifer knows that story, but um, yeah, Sean found is awesome. And their, their, their sons are really good runners. So, um, oh, Kim, same program for middle school and high school. So I'm going to be adding middle school training to the track training system. I've got things I've got to do to update it. Um, the cross country training system has middle school training. I'm going to use some of that training for the first eight weeks of December and January because it's the same thing. All right, Kim, we're still building the engine in the same way. The other cool thing about middle school training is I've got all the speed development in there. I, I mean, I've got a middle school daughter who's a sixth grader. You know, I, I understand having seen her run cross country that she doesn't have an opportunity to run track, but if she did, we want speed development. We want kids running fast. So a middle school program actually looks, it's kind of a combination of a the 800 meter low volume program and, um, what we would have kids do in the uh, no prior 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 training program. Um, yeah, so that's uh oh Jen's got some smiley faces. Uh Jennifer's got smiley faces. So so yeah, we do we have middle school and and high school in there and I'll be adding more middle school training. I, I think what we have to be honest about too is that man, we really want to be careful with middle school kids. I'm not convinced a middle school athlete has to be focused in sixth grade and seventh grade to make, you know, the Nike cross nationals as an 11th grader. There's an athlete on the fifth place boys team, Niwa high school. Um, I'm friends with both his parents. He's a stud. He's a sophomore. He was playing football and soccer in middle school. I don't think he even, he might've run track in middle school, but he definitely didn't run uh, cross cross country in middle school. So um, good fit for eighth grader running fifth. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 446. Oh my gosh. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. What's great about this question is if I had an eighth grade son, Kim, I would let him run hard. If he likes the fit, if this kid really wants to be good, that's totally fine. Let's talk about Dathan Ritzenhein, right? Dathan Ritzenhein, um, father of Addison Ritzenhein, who won NXN. Dathan Ritzenhein was training totally, he was training hard in eighth grade. And you just have to make sure your son absolutely loves it, okay? I have daughters. I have a, a ninth grade daughter and a sixth grade daughter. There isn't as much um, history with sixth graders who are really good as girls being really good as 11th graders as girls. Ninth graders more so, and, and, and it's really changing now. You know, um, we, have, we have two women speaking at the Boulder Running Clinics, um, Mar Marie Markham and Robin McGillis, who have this awesome thing, Wildwood. I'll, I'm going to put it in the chat. You should check this out if you're coaching girls. But the bottom line is they're really making some inroads into, you know, how are we going to change this narrative that girls who are really good as, as middle schoolers aren't as, as good, you, you know, in, in the upper years of high school. But I think a boy who's an eighth grader, if you said your son's a sixth grader, I'd have a different answer. I think an eighth grade boy going into middle school track in January, take the kids gloves off, let them train hard. So what would you say? He loves to run, even broke mom's heart because he quit wrestling, but loves to run. Oh my gosh, he's a wrestler. So he's, he's totally tough. He's totally intense. Um, Elizabeth, love Wilder running and all they're doing. Absolutely. And we are so, I'm so lucky. I say we, everybody who's going to be at the Boulder Running Clinics is lucky. Personally, as the guy who runs the clinic, I'm so lucky that they said yes to speaking. Um, they have a great camp to, um, my daughter isn't into running quite enough to go to this camp, but you guys should really check out this camp too. Um, my, my, my daughter's got a really fun team camp she gets to go to, but, uh, yeah. So, so you can check that out. Okay, folks. I think, um, Tina, any middle schoolers who are following collegiates on Strava and running 10 miles and doing double thresholds. Oh, that sucks. Sorry. I probably shouldn't say socks. Um, you, that's a battle worth fighting. Absolutely. You, you know, we don't want middle, middle schoolers on Strava saying they've got to run 10 miles doing double thresholds. So, um, I don't necessarily have, um, 
I don't necessarily have the answer, but 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 that's one you, you want to work at. Stan says, Jay will not do you wrong. He truly wants the best for your runners. Keep it up, Jay. Late here in Pennsylvania, signing off. All right. All right. Okay. Jim says, picked up the track training system now, but can't wait to build on the success in track. Jim, I'm I'm blessed and honored that you're willing to do that, man. Um, you, you know, Jim's somebody who has so much success in cross country and he's been coaching a long time. I got goosebumps saying this. If a coach like Jim is willing to, to try to do something different, a coach who's won two state championships in a row in cross country, it does beg the question, are you willing to do it too? So that's, that, that, that's really fantastic. Jim, I look forward um, you, you know how this works. I look forward to you sending me your training plan and we um, can go through that. Um, Jennifer says, I tell my athletes all the time, do you think I would use this program with the found boys if I didn't fully trust that it works? So point being, would I use it with my sons if it didn't work? I love the track training system, XC training system. My athletes have achieved tremendous success. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I appreciate all, all the uh, kind words. Anybody else? Um, Grim Sweeper. Got the XTCS in. It has been a huge benefit for me as a first-year coach. All right. Um, just signed up in North Idaho. Awesome. Okay. I think we should wrap it up. Hour 50. How many of you went for hard hour 50 long runs? So when I would do an hour 50 in college, that was probably seven. Ah, might not even have been 17 for me. I would get my rear end kicked. The one, this is a fun thing to end on. You know, why do we care about running? Why do we think distance running is an amazing thing for young people to be part of? Because the, le and I know you know this, but I think it's worth hearing. The lessons they learn as a distance runner, they're learning some amount of mental fortitude, of toughness, of, of consistency, of discipline. And, and the only thing I really look back on as a collegiate athlete at the University of Colorado is I showed up every Sunday and ran as hard as I could. I never was at the, the front of a pack on a 17 or 20 mile long run. In fact, when I ran with my two closest friends, Zeke Tiernan and Chris Severy, I'd get dropped 10 miles into the run. This crazy run, the aqueduct was just 10 miles out flat and then 10 miles back. If I could make it out with them, that was a good day. And then I would just see them pull away over the next 10 miles. Okay. And, and I, and I think, you know, what a wonderful lesson to learn for me. I learned in college, but for your kids, they're, they're going to learn in high school. What a wonderful lesson that, hey, if I do hard things, good things will happen, right? And, and I'm leaving out. Like, I got so much better in college because I had a good coach with a good plan surrounded by really good teammates. But I think as an adult now, it's like, man, what a gift that was to be in a culture with, with teammates and with a coach where it's like, we get up Sunday morning. But my girl, I have a wonderful girlfriend. She's just amazing. And she's like, you guys got up at 8 a.m. on Sunday to run as hard as you could when it was cold outside? Like, yeah, I mean, that's we, we were we were abnormal. And and I look back on that as like distance running can teach you these skills and and give you these experiences that that you're you're going to be able to use later in life. So, bottom line is if a, if a kid ever says, you know, why are we running in circles, you know, and wants to be some cool philosopher that says why is this worth it? It's it's uh it's absolutely worth it. So, okay. See if there's any more comments. I think we should um we should probably sign off Josh is changing up this year in track to get my best girl to 450 and my boys to sub 420. Awesome. Um, Gregory, the positive relationship to athletics and confidence developed through running changes lives. Absolutely. Oh, Gregory Knight. I think I know who you are. Um, I think I know who you are. I think you wrote a super, super nice, um, whatchamacallit, uh, review testimonial for consistency is key. And my college program has you beat 7 a.m. on Sundays at the University of Rochester, early 1990s. Oh, you totally got us beat. Totally got us beat. All right. Hey, I'm going to sign off. Um, I've really enjoyed this. It'll take me a few days to get the uh, show notes, show notes. Everybody says that in podcasts, to get the time codes here so that you can go back and look at various things. Um, th 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 thanks everybody. Kim, thank you. Truly enjoyed two hours. I had no idea we were going to go for two hours, but, but it was great. And, um, and, and I'll say this too, Jay, you're a great coach because you had to earn it so you can teach it hard for genetically talented runners to do. I got goosebumps reading that. I, I think that's absolutely true. I, yeah, we'll just leave it at that.
That's absolutely true. I was the slowest guy on some very good teams. I did run well enough to get the letter, but I was the slowest guy on some good teams. And so I had to pay attention to everybody in front of me. And um, I, I did. I do think that's, I didn't think it at the time. It's an obvious gift now having enough talent to be on the team, but not enough talent to just be able to rely on that. So, all right, everybody have a good night and I uh, look forward to engaging with you in whatever way in the coming weeks and months. All right. Bye-bye.